Hello all. In today's session, we will begin with the most basic component of neural network called as perceptron. So these are the topics which are in your part B of unit 1. And in today's session, we will cover the first topic, understanding perceptron. So generally speaking, perceptron is a neural network that contains only one neuron. So we will talk about only single neuron in a neural network which is called as perceptron and then we will move on to the next session where we will talk about n number of neurons. So the most simple neural network is the perceptron which consists of a single neuron and it functions in a similar manner to a biological neuron as shown below. This is the figure of a biological neuron which receives electrical signals from dendrites and these signals are sent to the neuron. This neuron modulates the electrical signals and then fires an output. The output is fed to the another neuron here. The same operation goes on with an artificial neuron. You can see here in the figure similarities. Both you have input. Input signals are fed to the neuron. Neuron will modulate these signals and fire the output. Here we can see that we have, uh, this is an artificial neural network which is consisting of many layers with n number of nodes and each node is called as a neuron here which are stacked one over the other. Artificial neural network consists of many neurons that are structured in layers to perform some kind of calculations and predict an output. This architecture can be also called as a multi-layer perceptron and each node is called as a neuron. So this is the diagram of artificial neuron what, which I have already told which has input, neuron function and output. Not all these input features are equally useful or important to predict the output. So to have importance of each input or to know the importance of each, each input feature, we will represent each node with a parameter called as weight. You can see in this figure W1 is the weight assigned to input A1, W2 is the weight assigned to A2 and so on. These weights are numerical values which are associated with the connections between the neurons. So we will now consider this figure which is considered to be as a perceptron architecture. We can see that it has input vector which is nothing but a feature vector that is fed to a neuron. Next you have weight vector. Each input is assigned with some numerical value which is called as weight to distinguish between different input data points. Third you have neuron function. Neuron function uh, it can perform the operation within the neuron to modulate the input signal. You can see here two operations are perfor performed in the neuron function. One is summation which is called as weighted sum and the second is application of activation function that is step activation function. And in the fourth part you have an output which is controlled by the type of activation function we choose. So this output depends upon the type of activation function we are selecting. There are different activation functions which we will be discussing in next sessions but in today's session we will talk about step activation function whose output will be either 0 or 1. So this output can be 0 or 1 depending upon step activation function which we have selected for our task. Uh, a scientist called as Mr. Frank Rosenblatt invented this perceptron model which is used for binary classification which contains three main components. Those components are this is the input, the first component, second component is neuron function and the third component is output. So talking about the neuron function we have already discussed a neuron will perform these two operations. One is weighted sum and the second is activation function. We will talk about the weighted sum. We can see here that the weighted sum output is summation of all the inputs multiplied by their weights, corresponding weights and an extra parameter bias is being added up here. So bias is nothing but an extra weight 
while learning and adjusting the neuron to minimize the cost function so this bias is used to minimize the cost function this bias will decide the slope as well as the intercept you know that equation of a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c where m is called as slope and c is called as the intercept same is the case with our neural network y is equal to wx plus b w which is our weight is called as the slope b is called which is intercept is called as the bias now what is the importance of this bias is when i draw a line the point where this line touches the y axis is called as the bias if you don't have bias obviously we can control only the slope because all the lines straight lines start from the origin but if you have bias in the system then it is able to control the line as well as control the slope also control the intercept as well as control the slope this is the importance of bias so summation of wi xi plus b is the output of our weighted sum so expanding it you have z is equal to x1 w1 plus x2 w2 so on depending upon the number of inputs you have plus bias which is constant coming to the second operation which is happening inside a neuron function is step act activation function whatever output i got as sigma xi wi plus b on this i will be applying the activation function represented by sigma as i am talking about step activation function here you can look into the diagram of step activation function whose values are zero if wx plus b is less than or equal to zero and the output is 1 if wx plus b is greater than 0 based on these conditions the output will be generated as 1 or 0 when to use perceptron and how do they learn the single perceptron works with linearly separable data now what is linearly separable data is the data which can be easily separated by a straight line is called as a linearly separable data this means the training data should be separated by a straight line as shown below you can see in the figure that depending upon age and height i am selecting a candidate for a particular sport so if that person falls below the line that is red points then he is not selected and if that person falls above the line then that candidate will be selected for the sports so red color dot represents that disqualified for sport and blue color star represents qualified for sport and this is the point where your b starts b sorry this is not the point the point where it touches the y intercept or y axis will give you the b for example if i don't have b in this then my line will be something like this or like this depending upon the slope value and you cannot call this line to be as a linearly separable data because it is not separating the data this line is called as my best fit line which will separate the data into two parts yes or no this is the importance of bias how does the perceptron learn the perceptron uses trial and error to learn from its mistakes you can see in the diagram here uh, the weights get tuned to different values to update the weights we call it as updating the weights so that the cost function gets reduced the weights are tuned up and down during the learning process to optimize the value of loss function we'll talk about the different steps involved in perceptron learning this is the first step which will can calculate the predicted value as y hat where z is equal to output of my weighted sum w1x1 plus w2x2 so on till wn xn plus bias apply this is the equation final equation z is equal to sigma of xi into wi plus b on this i will be applying an activation function so y hat is equal to activation function of this z and y hat is what predicted value this is the true value the machine will compare 
find out the error by finding the difference between the true value minus predicted value. In the third step, it then updates the weight, that is change the weight values. If the prediction is too high, it adjusts the weight to make a lower prediction the next time and vice versa and repeat the process. So to reduce the error, it will change the weight values W1, W2, so on till Wn will get changed called as updating the weights and then again calculate y hat and then find y minus y hat and find out the error. Obviously, this error will be less than the error what we have calculated because we have updated the weights. This process is repeated till I get minimum error. How to train a perceptron model to predict whether a play, player will be accepted into the college squad? So what do we do? We collect the data from previous years and train the perceptron to predict whether the player will be accepted based on the two features, height and weight. That is, I am training my machine by giving some previous year's data of height and weight. Player's height and weight is given as input to the model my machine, this machine gets trained with the data. The trained perceptron will find the best weight and bias values. Now I will give new weight and bias value and ask machine to predict depending upon this weight and bias will that candidate will be selected or not selected for that particular college squad. So as I have two parameters height and weight Wx plus B can be written as W1x1 plus W2, X2, where X1 and X2 are height and age respectively. Here we have talking about height and weight. So in this equation, I have mentioned it as height and age. So I can write height into W1 plus weight into W2 plus B, so on. So it depends upon the parameters or features what you select. So the same graph what I have shown earlier. Consider a player who is 150 centimeter height and age is 12 and this candidate falls below the line and he is not selected for the college squad. And here you can see for age 18 and 190 centimeter height, this candidate is selected for the college squad. If it falls above the line, then the player will be accepted. And this line is called as my best fit line, which will separate the data linearly. Thank you all.